The goal of this video is to examine the nature of a so-called initial value problem. And we'll look at three examples. What is an initial value problem? Roughly, an initial value problem is what you get when you take a differential equation, typically separable, and you add enough information to pick out from among all the possible solutions, the so-called general solution, you pick out a particular solution that satisfies that information. Now, here's a typical example. Solve the differential equation dy dx equals x plus 1 subject to the condition y of 0 equals 4. And in th this example it sort of tells you why it's called a, an initial value problem because if you think of x as being the input uh, variable, when x equals 0 you might think of that as being the initial time. So often a differential equation with the extra bit of inf information has to do with what the value of the function needs to be at the so-called initial time. So um, unfortunately, the initial value problem could have information that has nothing to do with any kind of initial value. So it's a little bit of a misleading name that way. But in this case, the equation is separable. Differential equation is separable. So we're going to separate variables and integrate with no problem. And there's our general solution. But we don't want the general solution. We want the solution for which y of 0 equals 4. In other words, when x is 0, y must equal 4. Well, we can plug that information into the formula for the general solution and discover that we need to choose c equals 4 to satisfy this extra bit of information. We would say the particular solution to this equation is y equals 1 half x squared plus x plus 4. Now, what have we accomplished? So it's worth looking at a graph here. There are a bunch of solutions plotted for various values of c, and you will notice that when c is 4, we have selected out the solution for which y of 0 equals 4. In other words, the point 0 comma 4 lies on the graph. So here's another example. Solve the differential equation dy dx equals 2x e to the negative y, subject to the condition y of 2 equals 3. Now there's nothing initial about x equals 2, but we still might call this an initial value problem. The differential equation is separable, so we will separate and integrate. No trouble in this case, solving for y. Now before we solve for y, however, we might want to figure out the constant of integration right now. When x equals 2, y equals 3. So let's substitute that information into the formula for the general solution, and we discover that the c we need to choose in this case is e cubed minus 4, which is about 16.1. So the particular solution in this case is y equals ln of x squared plus e cubed minus 4. Now, once again, graphically, you could plot solutions for various choices of c, and you'll notice that from among these, when c is about 16, in fact e cubed minus 4, you're going to find the solution whose graph contains the point 2 comma 3. So the final example, solve the differential equation dy dx equals y squared over x, and this time you want um, the condition that when x equals negative e, y should be 2. Separate the variables, integrate, and now we're going to plug in our extra bit of information. In this case, solving for c might take a little more work. ln of, of uh, the absolute value of negative e is the same as ln of e, which is 1. So c is negative 3 halves. Now we need to solve for y, so we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1, reciprocate, we can clean this up a little bit, multiply top and bottom by 2, we can even apply a law of logarithms to make this look a little better. So we've discovered our particular solution. We can use your favorite software to plot a, a bunch of solutions and notice that this particular solution goes through the point negative e comma 2.